Hey, y'all, this is Troy Black. So I have a word from the Lord to share with you today about the Constitution and about an attack on a constitutional amendment that's coming up in the future. But first, I'm going to pray and I'm actually going to give you a follow up to a word about gun control that I shared last August. And I'm going to show you what happened after that. Holy Spirit, I just ask that you would help every person hearing this to hear your words today, that your message would be so clear, God, that you would grab onto people's hearts and that the word would be firmly planted. They would be able to hear what you have to say, Lord, not me, that I would get out of the way and that this would be about you and your kingdom in Jesus mighty name. Okay, so this is it, y'all. This was a word I shared back on August 21st of 2023. So this was last summer. And the title of the video is God warned me about coming gun control. And I'm just going to share a small snippet from the actual message. If you want to watch the whole thing, you can go watch it. I saw a vision on June 24th of 2023 of a large gun that's actually being held by two hands. It's like a, a large version of a gun. And then I heard the Lord say, gun restrictions coming by the new year. But then also I heard in January. And then this is something that came out a few months later on November 7th. And this is on CNN. It says Supreme Court revisits the scope of the right to bear arms in the wake of latest mass shooting. And then that article says it was only a year ago that the Supreme Court issued a landmark Second Amendment opinion that expanded gun rights nationwide and established that firearms rules must be consistent with the nation's historical tradition. Then it says now on Tuesday, the justices are hearing oral arguments in the wake of yet another mass shooting in a case asking it to consider the scope of its 2022 decision. There was a decision made in favor of the Second Amendment and the right to bear arms in 2022. And then 2023, the opposite happened, right? And this was after I shared that original word. Now look at this. This is an article that came out on January 3rd this year from PBS, and it says 2024 brings new gun restrictions in several states. So the original word was gun restrictions coming in January by the new year that was shared in August. And then about five months later, we see that this article comes out 2024 brings new gun restrictions in several states. If you want to go do the research for yourself and actually find more information on that, feel free. One other thing we've seen happen since then is back in March, we saw an article from News Nation Now was titled DOJ launches National Center to help states implement red flag gun laws. If you want to research that for yourself, you can. Many people probably already know about that. But some people have criticized it saying it's another attack on the Second Amendment. So this is what I heard. I'm going to get into this prophetic word now. I heard this back on March 8th. I'm just going to read through this word. And then God gave me an encouraging message to share with you today that I want to share. Okay. This is what I heard. I heard the Lord say a constitutional amendment is about to come up for review. A moment of intense scrutiny. They will verify their right to question this based on an event that just took place within the last year or so. A popular opinion swept under the rug. And then I heard a releasing of the guard. I'm not sure exactly what that means, but that's what I heard. A releasing of the guard. A powerful opposition meant to obliterate a long-standing belief. A driving force leading to a reckoning. So this word, and this is only part of it, but this word could potentially be referring to some of the red flag laws that have come out in March since I, I heard this March 8th. And some of those things were happening at the end of March, but that's not the impression I'm getting from the Lord. That may be part of it, but I also believe that this is something that's still coming. And so this is something I believe we need to look for in the news that we're going to see a verification that this was from the Lord, a confirmation after the fact. But I do want to stop and say a few things briefly. If you're a Christian and you believe that prophecy is for today, I would encourage you to pray about the prophecy that you listen to, whether it be this word or any other word from any other person. Because if we're not willing to pray about it and we're not willing to get the prophetic word confirmed personally to ourselves from the Holy Spirit, please hear this in love. But I believe it shows a lack of trust in God's willingness to confirm his word because people are not perfect. There are some people out there that are just faking it and they know it. Okay. There are other people that are doing their best, but they've made a mistake at some point, right? 
or, or they are making a mistake. And then there are some people that, you know, you listen, you go, wow, is this the Lord? Or you watch a video and, you know, the natural mind rejects it because it seems strange. But then when you take it back to prayer and you start to pray about it, the Holy Spirit gives you a confirmation and says, hey, no, that's all me. I'm using them. I'm moving through them. And so we need to learn as Christians not to judge based on the natural, but rather to judge based on the spiritual, which means what does the word of God say? What does the written word say? Does it line up with that message, the message of the word? Does it line up with the gospel of Jesus Christ? Is it pushing people towards Jesus or away from Jesus? And number three, is the Holy Spirit behind it? Is he confirming it? Is his presence resting on it or not? Okay, so the other thing is I'm about to read the rest of this prophecy and I really sense from the Holy Spirit that some people are not going to like what's said here, but this would be my encouragement to you is take a step back away from even your political beliefs for a second. Now, I'm not trying to bash anyone's political beliefs. I'm not trying to push anyone one direction or another. I'm just trying to be faithful and share the word. It's going to sound a certain way, but that's not even my political stance. Okay. So please hear it from that perspective. I'm not trying to be political. I'm trying to be obedient. Okay. So, so here we go souls in the kingdom. And the Lord said, that's what I'm after. All right. So some of us, as soon as we start hearing the word that a constitutional amendment is going to be coming up for review or under attack, something starts to rise up inside of us and say, no, this is not right. But the Lord went on to say souls in the kingdom. That's what I'm after. And then he said, people's souls, a powerful time of deliverance will supersede this overcoming every obstacle in order to amend not just the rights that we hold dear that are in check, but a fresh renewal of the peace of God coming to a nation. So the Lord is saying there's something else going on here that's even more important than preserving the rights of the people in this nation. And that is bringing lost souls into the kingdom. Now, should our rights be preserved? I believe so. And I don't believe that God is saying that's a bad thing for our rights to be preserved. But the Lord is saying there's something that's going to even supersede this. It's a powerful time of deliverance. What is deliverance? Deliverance is throwing off the old to make room for the new. It's getting out from under a lie, out of the enemy's traps, to come fully into the work of the kingdom, to allow the Holy Spirit to fully fill us as the church in order to move us forward into whatever God has for us. Deliverance, in some cases, is us as Christians saying, I'm not going to stand for that anymore. The devil's been feeding me something that I've lost the taste for it. I don't want it anymore. And I'm kicking. I'm I'm saying no. There's this funny scene in an old Jerry Lewis movie where it's called The Ladies Man, where Jerry Lewis is sitting in a baby's high chair as a grown man. And there's a lady trying to feed him, spoon feed him as if she's feeding a baby. And he's just talking to her like a person and saying, what are you doing? Like, I'm not going to let you feed me. This is stupid. I want out of here. Get me out of this chair. But then eventually, because she is persistent, he finally is like, all right, whatever, just give me a bite, whatever. And the funny thing is from the whole scene is he could just bust out of the chair any second, right? But he's letting it happen. And the Lord is giving me that picture right now. And the Lord is saying for Christians who've been filled with the spirit, who have heard the truth, heard the gospel message, deliverance is as simple as this saying, no, thank you. I'm not going to settle for this any longer. This is not what I've meant for. This is not what I'm designed for. I'm meant for bigger things than this. And this is keeping me caged. Man, I hear that from the Lord. This is keeping me caged in a place that the devil intends, but God never intended. I'm not going to stand for this anymore. What am I talking about? I'm not talking about the freedoms that we enjoy in this nation or whatever nation you live in. I'm not talking about the rights of society. I'm talking about freedom in Christ and moving into the character that God intends for us and the nature of Christ becoming our nature. So us no longer living according to the flesh, but living according to the spirit, walking according to the spirit, no longer living in line with the ways of the world, but now living in line with the ways of God's nature and God's kingdom, God's structure. See, God has a purpose for you. He has a design for you. He's already built a plan for you. You know how when you go in and you sit down with somebody like a financial advisor, whether they're trying to get you out of debt or trying to like help you invest or whatever, and they go, well, let's build a custom plan for you. God's already done that for your life. He's already, he's already put all of the little pieces together. He's considered every option. And he said, hey, here's the plan. I have good plans for you. And man, I hear the Lord saying, I have a reason for you even walking through this season that you're going through right now, even this struggle, but you don't have to struggle alone because you're not alone. 
I'm right there with you. And if you will begin to see the purpose maker in the middle of the plan, even in the hardships, even in the heartaches, even in those moments of frustration, if you'll begin to see my hand at work, not only am I going to get you through to the other side, not only are we going to walk through the river and not be drowned, not only are we going to walk through the fire together and not be burned, but you're going to see the greater purpose that I have for you on the other side. And I just hear the Lord saying, this is fulfilling something that I planned out a long time ago for you. I don't desire evil for you, for my people. I don't desire the trials, the tribulations. Those are not good things. They're not things that I've created for you to endure, to walk through, but they are a part of this system. They're a part of this world. And I can even take those things and I can turn them around and use them for good. Let me show you the new plan for your life. It's not your plan anymore. I hear the Lord saying, it's my plan. And it's a good one. You don't have to struggle. Okay, so this is what I heard next. I heard the Lord say, a fresh renewal of the peace of God coming to a nation. And he said, I would rather have purpose in pain than no pain and a purposeless existence. He said, don't wish for better days. Pray for more repentance of leaders and a day when changed hearts will stand up and declare true freedom instead of a temporary one. And then the Lord said this, and this is, he's talking again about this attack on this amendment, right? He said, they're going to win this one. The, I believe he's talking about the people that are attacking this right, okay? But he said, they're going to win this one, but the time of deliverance that is going to come out of it will be worth every penny spent and every life surrendered. And, and I got this impression that surrender in this case meant people being forced to go through a hardship or a trial. But I got this impression that the win that he's talking about here, that, that this win may only be eventually, and you're going to have to struggle to win this, and then that it's only going to last for a time, that there is going to be an undoing of it. And I believe also that that's what the Lord is talking about here when he said, overcoming every obstacle in order to amend not just the rights that we hold dear that are in check. Okay, so he could be referring to amending an amendment, right? Okay. Is he talking about the Second Amendment here? I don't know, to be honest. I don't know if God's talking about the Second Amendment. He said a constitutional amendment is about to come up for review. He may be. It could very well may be the Second Amendment. It may not be. We're going to have to wait and see. But the Lord pushed me to Acts chapter 3, and I want to finish by just saying a few things. And this is how I believe that God is wanting to bring us from that place of struggle in our current situation, where we keep going, God, are you really on my side? Are you really here? Have you really seen what I've gone through and what I'm going through? Is this really just temporary or is this the way it's going to be? He's going to bring us from that place to a place of a victory march where the rain is still pouring around us. The flood waters are still rushing around us, but we're on the higher ground where we feel like I'm on a higher ground. I'm not sure how I got here, but God has set me here and I'm going to be okay. And we can see ourselves walking out of it. Now, that doesn't mean that everything changes all of a sudden. It doesn't mean that we don't struggle anymore, but we see ourselves walking out of this struggle in victory. And we begin to understand and realize the potential right where we are for change, not just in ourselves, but in our neighbors, our friends, our environment, the people around us. We begin to recognize what God is able to do in us and through us, even in the moment. So this is Acts chapter three, and Peter is actually talking to mainly Jews here. He has just been the vessel for God to heal this man who's been lame and a beggar for 40 years. So he's, he's sitting at the gate, right? And, and he asks for money. And Peter says, we don't have any money, but what I do have, I'm going to give to you. And he says, in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk, right? And this man begins to walk. But then the people gather around and they're like, wow, what are we supposed to do based on this? And Peter uses it as an opportunity to preach the gospel. And he says, hey, this man was healed, not because we're special, but, but because of the name of Jesus Christ. This is what he says, okay? He says to these, these people who have not accepted Christ yet, but they saw what happened. They, they heard about Jesus' resurrection. They had seen the crucifixion probably. You know, they knew that, that all this stuff took place. He says, but the things which God previously announced by the mouths of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer, he has fulfilled in this way. Therefore, repent and return so that your sins may be wiped away in order that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. See, if you're a Christian, then you have repented of your sins. You've believed in Jesus and you've accepted his righteous gift of grace. You've accepted his righteousness as your own in place of your unrighteousness. He took your unrighteousness on the cross and he became a curse for you at the cross so that you would not be under the weight of the curse anymore because Jesus took it for you. 
So that's good news today. If you have believed in Jesus, you're not under the weight of the curse any longer. And man, and I just see again that the picture of Jerry Lewis, that actor, you know, sitting in that baby high chair and it's time to flip the tables. It's time to break the chair, right? It's time to say no more. I'm not going to live under this way anymore because I'm no longer under the curse because Jesus took it for me. The curse of the law. What is that? That's struggling to do everything right in order to have the favor of God and the blessing of God. It's struggling to do everything right in order to please God. Through Jesus, you are pleasing to God. If you believe in him, that's what the word says. Did you know the word says nothing can separate you from the love of Christ? The word says, by this, God demonstrates his love to us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So guess what? You cannot convince God to love you any more than he already does. Stop trying to convince him through your actions. You can't convince him. He already loves you. Why does he love you? Not because you're lovely. He loves you because he is love and he's good and he's never going to change. Many of us are struggling because we see the gap between us and God. Wow, I'm sinful. He's he's holy. I'm faithless. He's faithful. And it's going to take me so long to mature to the point where I'm faithful enough that I can come before him when the, the whole time the Lord is saying, stop relying on your faithfulness. It's never going to get you there. It's not good enough. Rely on my faithfulness. I just hear the father saying, what my son did for you at the cross is enough. It's always going to be enough. Stop trying to get into my favor and my blessing any other way by any other means is what the Lord is saying. They're not going to work for you. You can try all day long and it won't work. You've got to come the one way, man, the Lord is saying the one way that I made work, the one way that I've given you access, and that's through the sun. But what happens when we come into his presence, right? We should expect times of refreshing to come. We should be living in a season of refreshing, even through the hardship. That doesn't matter. That doesn't change the refreshing because why? It says refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Some of us are looking for the refreshing to come from the situation and the Lord is saying, now that's what my presence is for. My presence is all the refreshing that you need. And we know that we can come boldly before the throne room of grace today because of what Jesus did. We're not pushed out, but this is amazing. Here's what happens. Okay. God is wanting to reach down and touch many hearts right now who have been struggling with the same issue for years and years and years. And I believe he's talking about emotional wounds, hurts, and even sin struggles that start in the heart with feeling inadequate, with feeling rejected, with feeling left out, with feeling alone, with feeling unworthy, with feeling unwanted. The Lord is saying, you're not any of those things in my kingdom, in my family. I want you and I have a purpose for you and I love you, and nothing's ever gonna change that. This is what happens when the man gets healed. In Acts chapter four, we see that it says in verse 22, for the man on whom this miracle of healing had been performed was more than 40 years old, okay? And he had been lame from birth. And so he had been lame this entire time, and people knew who he was. They had seen the way he was. Listen, God is wanting to touch our hearts as believers and Christians today, because it says, because they were all glorifying God for what had happened, right? He's wanting to touch our hearts because those things we've been dealing with for such a long time, people have seen it. We're not hiding it. We're not hiding it from God. I'm not saying that to shame anybody, but I'm saying it's time to bring it out into the light. It's already out into the light in many ways. It's time to bring it out into the light in the presence of the Lord. Say, God, this is what I've been dealing with. I've been dealing with this hurt. I've been dealing with this rejection, and it's caused me to not reflect the nature of Christ in this area in my life, and I want to reflect his nature. How can I change this, Lord? And the Holy Spirit will come in and he'll begin to say, hey, here's the problem. Here's what you're dealing with. Here's the problem. Here's the root. And he may take you all the way back to where the, the trauma or the hurt was caused. But then he also will say, here's the solution. And it's the joy found only in his presence. It's the love found only in his presence. It's the peace found only in his presence. And when we have those things, they will begin, begin to fill those spaces, those empty spaces, and the other junk will just get pushed out. And we'll start seeing, wow, I, I don't need to sit in the high chair anymore. I don't need to eat the baby food because God has better food for me. And it's found in these times of refreshing in his presence. And I can come in, you know, I'm invited to his table. I can eat from his banquet hall anytime I, I want, anytime I need because of what Jesus has done. And this is gonna turn into a snowball effect of testimonies and of people turning to the Lord. Some of the most powerful things I've ever seen God do that have rocked my world have not been the miracles, even though I've seen them. They've not been the visions and the dreams, even though I've had those. They have been when I see somebody else's character or I've seen my own character change in a way that I never should have worked that way. 
how was that possible? You, you used to be this way. I used to be this way. And yet now, you know, it's like, what happened? Jesus came in and Jesus changed things that the world can never change. The world wants to stuff it down or the world wants to medicate it or the world wants to bring philosophy in and, and try to find a workaround. Jesus wants to completely heal it and change it from the inside out. He wants to fix it. He wants to make us new in him. This is James 4, 5, and I'm going to finish with this. It says, he jealously desires the spirit whom he has made to dwell in us, but he gives a greater grace. Look at this. There's a greater grace that God has for us today than we've even been experiencing up to this point. How do we get it? I want more grace, more of his unmerited favor. I mean, something I'm not earning. I'm just getting it freely because of what Jesus did for me. How do I get that? It says, therefore, it says, God is opposed to the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit, therefore, to God and resist the devil, and he will flee from you. We just say, God, I need it. God, I can't do without it. I can't do without your help. I need you. We humble ourselves and we say, Lord, here's the problem. Here's exactly where I am, but I know your love is enough and your grace is enough today. And you're going to come in and you're going to fix this stuff. And I'm going to sit here with you in your presence until you do. I'm not leaving. I'm not going anywhere. And I know that you're not going anywhere because Jesus, you said you would never leave me or forsake me. You said you'd be with me always, even to the end of the age. And by faith, we begin to rest in that promise. We begin to rest in the promise of the cross. We begin to rest in the promise of the Holy Spirit. We begin to rest in the promises of God. We begin to rest in His presence. And by faith, we maintain, we stay right there. And daily, we're fed from His table. And we're, ooh, we're strengthened, we're changed, we're transformed. We're made new in Him daily. It's a daily process. And all those things begin to fall off and, and, and people go, wow, you were one way for such a long time. And how, how did this happen? What happened here? And we can say, well, Jesus is a good shepherd. He's a good master. He's a good friend. And he can be your friend too. So I hope this has been encouraging. I love you all so much. I'll see you next time.